Hi, I'm Julie and I'm Ricky's wife and I'm here today because we want to talk about how to do really quality research for your articles and how to do it fast. So I thought we might spice things up a little bit. So what are we doing in our garden with a basket of some eggs? Well, I figured let's put Ricky to a challenge. Normally his writers have two hours to research and write their article. So today I thought we'd make him do it in one. But not only that, first, I picked a random article topic off of his list that he'd previously done the keyword research for, and I'm going to bury it in one of our garden beds. And then he has to find it. But because I'm not completely horrid, and for a little more fun, we have two bonus eggs that will give him five and 10 extra minutes, and one that will knock off two, just for the fun of it. I've asked my son to help record as I hide the eggs. This is the egg with his topic. This is the one loses time. Now we gotta make it look like we've been digging in the other ones too. Okay, I think, well, we're ready for him to come find them later today. So you set this up this morning? Yeah. Okay, well. Okay, are you ready? ready? On your mark. Get set, go. Ooh. Oh. Let's see, is that it? What'd you find? <laughs> ah, I get five extra minutes. often do baby chicks die and when they're vulnerable. Are there other prize ones? Yes, there's Is 10 Is it worth minutes. it? Ooh, 10, 10 more minutes. minutes. 10 minutes. Sweet! I would stop looking. Yeah. Okay, so what do you do now? I guess I write an article even though I'm covered in dirt and sweat. All right, we've got an hour, eight minutes, and 25 seconds now to research and write this blog post. We'll see what I can do. Good luck. Sounds good. So, spoiler alert, I am going to succeed at this. I'll let you watch a little bit as I do it. But while I'm in the corner there, <laughs> uh, completing this task, I want to explain to you this research process. Because the research process is extremely important. Writing a blog post in an hour could be a tough thing to do, but doing that and actually having some sort of original and helpful research is extremely difficult to do. So let me show you exactly what I did in this blog post, and then let me talk about sort of what I would do optimally if I had just a little bit more time. One of the first things I obviously did was I just Googled the question. Now, obviously what that's gonna do is gonna show me the competition, and I wouldn't have picked this topic if there was a lot of really good competition. But what that did is it started to send me down a few different avenues. What you'll see is that some of the searches that I did weren't the exact same search query. The search query that I got in my search analysis was just how often do baby chicks die? But really part of that question is like, what percentage of baby chicks die before they, you know, obviously reach maturity, in which case they're no longer chicks. That's part of the question. At what stage of life are baby chicks most vulnerable? If we can understand some of those different pieces of the question, then it's gonna help us frame a better answer than what's already out there. Now, a normal Google search turned up some blog posts and it also turned up some good information provided from some hatcheries, which is another thing I'd have done with a little more time is actually potentially call a handful of hatcheries and do a survey of them of what percentage of baby chicks die in the hatchery when they're really young. I also could have just had a conversation and asked some questions about the whole process in the hatchery, how that goes, how vulnerable those little baby chicks really are at that stage versus at later stages of life. They would have been able to tell me some about the environment they put the chicks in, sort of the precautions that they take. Um, I could have talked to some of the stores around, uh, called even the local store where I bought my own baby chicks uh, to find out sort of how they keep those chicks day to day, you know, how much they feed them, how much do they clean out the area where they're kept. I certainly could have talked with more experts. Now there's a reason that I was able to get away without doing this that I'm gonna talk about here in just a couple more minutes. The next thing that you'll see that I did is I actually went to Google Scholar. On Google Scholar, I'm able to do a search and actually find some scholarly content. I found a couple of kind of interesting studies that have been done on certain hatcheries. Those studies gave me kind of a range of what to expect, what's normal in those first 10 days when they're most vulnerable, as well as it helped me understand kind of the difference between like 
chicks that are born in a hatchery in kind of perfect conditions versus those that are hatched and maybe raised by individuals um, without sort of those optimal conditions. The next place I went for research was actually YouTube. YouTube is kind of a treasure trove of information. The reason is that there's a lot of information shared on YouTube that's not quite as easily indexable. YouTube's really good and they know exactly what's being said in every video and they do index it pretty well. But people don't typically go to YouTube to find answers to some of these types of specific questions. Also, when somebody does a Google search, these are not the types of searches that videos are showing up prominently and predominantly in those search results. So oftentimes in these videos on YouTube, people are sharing just fantastic information that's not even necessarily just the specific answer to your question, but it's also kind of covering the whole topic in a, in a much more broad way, but a much more complete way. And so by watching some of these videos, you're able to get a lot more breadth of knowledge and immerse yourself further within the topic. That's actually why we give our writers a full two hours to write this length of a blog post. They have a full 30 minutes to do research before they ever write a single word answering the search query. And we have them do the exact same things that I'm talking to you about here today. They'll go to Google and do a search. They may go to Google Scholar and find some scholarly data, some statistics or some really interesting information there. But oftentimes they'll go to YouTube and they'll watch multiple videos to help them understand the topic in its entirety rather than just the answer to this one little question kind of by itself. Well, this brings me to the next point, which is the best way to do original research is to actually immerse yourself within your niche. I'm talking about baby chicks on this website fairly frequently lately because it's something that I'm doing in my life right now. <laughs> I'm actually raising my own baby chicks. Really though, immersion in the topic is the best way to succeed at doing research for blog posts. The more involved you are in the niche that you're writing about, the better the content that you're going to create. You're not going to have to rely on what other bloggers wrote, what other people said on YouTube, and just the information that's available to you. You'll be able to rely a lot more on your own experience, even if you're not a total expert. The other thing I would have done if I had more time or if I didn't need to write this in one sitting is I would have gone to some Facebook groups or uh, forums or places where I participate in online discussion and I would have posted questions. I would have asked other people who raise chicks. What percentage of your chicks typically survive? But I did find some information that backed up the results that I found in the scholarly articles, as well as from my own experience, so that I could give people kind of a rough number of what they could expect. But putting together your own data is really the best way to go. So go to social media and ask people that question, and then allow yourself to come back later, gather that data, put together a nice table or a nice little chart, and then write the article. Doing high quality research for your blog post doesn't have to be that complicated, and clearly it doesn't have to take that much time. In an hour and 15 minutes, because I found a couple of extra eggs, I was able to not only find my topic, but I was able to write the article. This article came out to 1,169 words, and I actually feel pretty happy with it. It's quite complete. The only thing that I need to add at this point is some photos. I might have added some stock images, but why would I when I have my own chicks? So I'm gonna go take some pictures, add them to the blog post, and you'll be able to see it online. The link will be in the description. We'll see y'all there.